Hi guys, today I've got Jen Comis from jencomis.com and we're going to talk about her background with fitness competing, uh, nutrition, we'll talk about dieting, all kinds of interesting exercise things. Um, her wonderful blog, which has got some great resources on there and some stuff that you can look up um, and find on her blog that will help you in your fitness journey. So we're going to go ahead and dive right in. Welcome, Jen. I'm excited to have you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Absolutely. So I wanted to give my girls a little background into your history with fitness. So tell us how you got into the fitness world. I know you're also working with Girls Gone Strong. You have your own coaching clients as well. So what brought you to the point where you're at now? Oh, gosh. So I got my start in fitness when I was about 17 years old. I was a really inactive teenager, mm -hmm. and I was like a total bookworm. So I was always in the books, straight-A student, but, and I just neglected taking care of my body. So it was when I was around 16 years old, I had um, kind of like this aha moment and realized I really needed to start prioritizing my health. Because uh, here in Utah, you have to take two years of physical education or PE class mm -hmm. and pass them in order to graduate. And I failed, not once, but twice. I wow. failed high school gym class. So that was kind of my um, big aha moment when I realized that that almost prevented me from graduating. So I started getting into the gym. And of course, I started where most people start in group fitness classes. Mm -hmm. So tons and tons of step aerobics and then spin class. And I just really fell in love with the uh, group fitness atmosphere, the energy and the music and the camaraderie. And I just, I really loved it. So I eventually decided, hey, I want to start teaching classes. Um, at the time I was living in Las Vegas. So I got involved teaching classes and then uh, started, I kind of evolved into personal training from mm -hmm. there. Personal training led me to figure competitions, so that's when I started competing, and then from there, in order to like pull myself out of that, I started getting involved in powerlifting to try to kind of transition my way of thinking out of just like how my body looked. I mm -hmm. wanted to see what it could do, so I got into uh, got involved in powerlifting and. Uh, that's when, about the time, that's when we founded Girls Gone Strong. Um, myself and six other women, we founded Girls Gone Strong back in, I think, 2011. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where it all took me to get to this point here now. Yeah, what a great journey. And I love it. Um, you know, just how the story is just great because a lot of people, I don't know if you get this now, um, but I, I certainly know that myself personally, I get a lot of people are like, oh, well, you must have been really athletic growing up or you must have played sports or, you know, whatever. And I'm like, I did nothing. Like I was a couch potato. I ate frozen burritos with cream cheese and salsa on top of them. Like every day after school, <laughs> you know, it was terrible. So yep. yeah, it's, um, I always love finding out how, you know, my fellow fitness friends got into it because, you know, a lot of times it's, you know, I would have assumed you were an athlete and, you know, had done all these things in high school for sure. Yeah. Oh goodness. No. I mean, I played t-ball and that was, that was truly the extent of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So going, I, so competition is really a hot button for me, uh, in terms of like topics and what I like to speak out about. And it's, uh, can kind of be a clunk of confliction for me because I still do coach some clients that are getting ready to compete. And, um, it was one of those things that I vacillated back and forth with because it felt like not within my integrity because it's like something that I don't personally believe in anymore for myself. Um, however, they were reaching out to me and I felt like a moral obligation to take them down the safe and healthy route. So I do have a couple clients that I'm still coaching. So when you started competing, um, how was your perspective on like, you were saying you shifted from that, and I really want to get into that, from that to powerlifting, because I did the same thing. So it's kind of interesting that we have these parallel paths. Um, so how was your perspective? Like, what drove you to do the figure competition? Did it just feel like a natural thing because you were a trainer? Uh, it was really interesting because, so I was so immersed in the fitness industry and doing like all these group fitness classes and then I was personal training. And at the time I just couldn't seem to figure out why I couldn't get my body to look like these women's bodies in, uh, like all the 
competition magazines, yeah. like oxygen. Mm -hmm. And I was always like, why doesn't my body look like that? Like I work out all the time. I feel like I was eating healthy. And uh, at the time I was living in Las Vegas. So I was training at several of the gyms out there and the gyms are just huge. They're mm -hmm. enormous. So they have these huge uh, teams coming through there, mm -hmm. you know, coaches that will coach a group of 15 to 20 women at a time to prep them for figure, bikini, physique competitions. So I saw all these women with these really hard, muscular, mm -hmm. super lean physiques, and that's what I always wanted my body to look like. Mm -hmm. And I just couldn't figure out why I couldn't get there. So I thought, well, and and I personally think this was a huge mistake on my part, but I thought, well, you know, if I want to get my body to look like that, apparently I need to do a show. And mm -hmm. that, that was very much the wrong answer for me personally um but that's how I kind of ended up getting to that space where hey this sounds like a great idea because mm -hmm. basically I saw other people doing it and I thought oh that must be the magic ticket right so what did you think about that so like as far as the whole experience like competing the training the workouts the nutrition you know supplementation all that versus like now looking back you know where you can kind of look back and go oh my gosh okay so different, right? Man, that is, that's such a huge topic for me. And I'm sure you understand too, mm -hmm. because there are so many conflicting emotions with that. Uh, there were, my body finally started to change dramatically. I mean, it was changing so quickly because, and that was the, like, that was my first real shot at dieting. I mean, I kind of felt like I was eating healthy yeah. or whatever. You know, yeah. For me back then though, yeah, that was like turkey sandwiches and granola bars. Right. You know, so that was really <laughs> my first like go with dieting. And so I had like what I call a virgin metabolism. And so the diet, I mean, my body changed day to day, dramatically mm -hmm. changed. And I remember like filling my stomach and going, I can feel like my abdominal muscles. And it was completely yeah. foreign to me. Right. You know, so it was tough for me to see like my body was changing so rapidly and so many people were commenting mm -hmm. on it. And you kind of end up feeding off that those compliments, you know, even if you don't really want to, everyone was like, Oh my gosh, what are you doing? You look so amazing. Yeah. But the conflict for me there was, I felt so terrible. Yeah. As the diet wore on, I felt more and more terrible. And it, I mean, I just, I remember I was a totally different person. I was so grumpy and mm -hmm. so just ornery all the time. And I mean, I still to this day feel bad for my boyfriend that I had at the time because I was just <laughs> such a pain to be around. Yeah. I didn't have any energy. I was no fun. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was, a, it was a really conflicting thing for me in my head because I had all these people that were like, oh my gosh, you look amazing. And also I was a personal trainer at the time. Mm -hmm. So my business, because my body was changing, my business was booming. Isn't that and crazy? That was I was yeah, it was just yeah. trying to like get into the industry. So, you know, to have all these people reaching out, wanting to work with me, you know, and wanting to know what I'm doing, but then also to just feel so horrible all the mm -hmm. time. It was a really big mental battle for me. Yeah. I remember personally being, well, you know, I have children and so we would naturally want to go out they'd want to go out on the weekends and have dinner and I'd have to take my Tupperware with me you know with my stupid food and everything and I just remember being so mad that everybody else could eat like normal food and I couldn't and I would be in such a terrible mood I'd be like pissed at everybody you know yeah but I feel you I, I remember being in the grocery store one day and just people staring because I had, I would, was so lean. I had the same thing, virgin metabolism. And I had got so shredded that people were like, can I touch your arms? Like random people in the grocery store. Oh my God. I've never seen a woman with arms like that. Can I touch your arms? <laughs> you know? So I get that you feed off that. It was like really cool to have that, that feeling that you've never felt before. And you're like, it clicks. You're like, oh my gosh. Okay. I, now I look like these girls in the magazines in like the normal grocery store, you know? Um, totally, totally get that. I, it just brings me back right away. So yeah. So then post show, how were things for you post show? Because I know for, in my experience, that's when things went haywire. And I know a lot of women, um, seem to resonate with that as well. So what was your experience? Yeah, my experience 
was really, really rough. I ended up uh, place taking first in my class. Mm -hmm. And so that was like the high, the highlights. And then everything went downhill from there. It was really strange because after my show, I remember we were in Lake Tahoe. I traveled for my show and we were in Lake Tahoe. And I remember standing at the breakfast buffet the next morning. And like I had dreamed of this day, right? Like, right. oh my gosh, I'm going to be normal. And it was it was the furthest thing from normal. I, I felt like I didn't know what I was supposed to eat. Mm -hmm. I felt kind of lost and super scared. And it was just really strange. And my body, my diet was really, really restrictive. Mm -hmm. um, it was dangerously restrictive. So my body rebounded like crazy. It was probably over the next couple of months. I don't even know if it was three months, but I've gained about 30 pounds. Mm -hmm. um, gained weight back so quickly that... I remember people at the gym coming up to me and saying, do you still work out? I mean, it was, it was really, really rough. And I felt awful physically because your body is just kind of like in a state of shock. It doesn't yeah. understand what's going on, you know? So physically it was awful. Mentally, it was just brutal. I mean, I remember crying because I didn't want to leave my house. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't want to wear anything but sweatpants. So it was really rough. Um, the rebound ended up causing some serious, well, the, not necessarily the rebound, uh, the dieting process caused hormone issues, thyroid problems, mm -hmm. adrenal issues, all of those things that I still deal with today. Yep. Um, so still dealing with those repercussions. So it took me, I want to say about a year mm -hmm. for me to finally feel like I could even function as a human again. <laughs> it right. Was pretty rough. How long did you prep for like hardcore? 18 weeks. Yeah. That was my first show too. It was, I think between 16 and 18 weeks. And I remember the same thing, like the, you know, the, the night that, that you are done competing and you go out to dinner and I was just like, okay, you know, ate whatever, woke up. And I was like, everything was just tight and I was bloated and like veins were everywhere. And I just remember making myself so sick because I had no like gauge of like, I didn't, like, I never felt full. It was the strangest thing. Like I could eat and people like my family would be like, how are you eating that? I don't understand how you're consuming that much food. And I'm like, I don't either. And I just kept eating it, you know, but yeah, yeah same thing, you know, 25, 20, 25 pound rebound. And I think it took me about almost two years to really get out of the, well, because I had done it for, I did it for over the course of three years and I kept doing a show to like fix the damage from the previous show. So seven shows later and I'm like, okay, this is just bad, you know? So how is your, so how did you shift over to powerlifting? Because I did the same thing and it was two totally different worlds, um, which both have their, their, you know, their pluses and their negatives. But, uh, but how did you do that? How did you make the shift? Yeah, so I was really good friends with Molly Galbraith, mm -hmm. who I co-founded Girls Gone Strong with. She's the current GGS owner. Really good friends with Molly back then, and her and I were both coming off of figure competitions. The difference between her and I is Molly had done powerlifting prior to uh, that point. She had competed in a couple powerlifting meets, and I remember seeing her like sharing all these videos of squatting and deadlifting and I just, at the time, I was always like, I don't really understand. Like, that's not really for me. But when I rebounded from my show, uh, my blood test came back and my hormones were a mess. And my doctor, like, sat me down and said, you have to, like, overhaul your entire lifestyle. Like, no more crazy cardio, no more training like a maniac. Like, you have to really take it easy. And I remember kind of just, it, that, like, threw me down a weird spiral because mm -hmm. the gym was such a huge part of my life. And I really needed that moment in my life to happen because it was a huge wake up call for me. And it was kind of that time that I started to realize I was using exercise as a way to kind of like take away from my life. Mm -hmm. And so I realized I needed something with exercise and performance, like to, to add back to my life. So I thought, well, you know, maybe, maybe powerlifting just because it'll keep me in the gym. It'll give me something to do. And it'll finally take my mind off of the way my freaking body looks mm -hmm. because that is all I have focused on for like 10 12 years prior yeah. to that, which is just insane to say it out loud. I know. I, know. Yeah, I, I, I finally was like, I got to focus on something other than the way my body looks. Yeah. And how was your training now? So are you still dabbling in, did you do a powerlifting meet? No, it's so funny. I've always, I've trained for like a power lifter for yeah. so many years and have, I've been so serious about it, but I never stepped on a platform for some reason. It never really interests me to get mm -hmm. beat. <coughs> 
<laughs> excuse me. So I've never competed. Yeah. It's, um, I did one, but again, same thing, training, you know, training styles and outcomes are extremely opposite ends. Like this is a total subjective, like what you look like sort of molding your body, which there's nothing wrong with that. And I still think that that's lots of fun, um, to train that way. You know, I enjoy that, you know, with Jen's bigness project and, you know, that whole perspective shining a light on that. I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. I think when it starts to get sketchy is when you be, you, it becomes an unhealthy, um, obsession, which is sort of what I feel like it was for me for a while. Um, but powerlifting, um, it's just celebrating like your strength and, just pushing for like different numbers. Like here you're like trying to get to a scale weight a lot of the time. And here you're just like trying to increase your, your weight numbers in how much you're lifting and pushing. Lots of fun to chase those goals. I think because <laughs> you can eat donuts over here on this side, <laughs> you know, if you want. So, uh, very different. So how, so what does your training look like now? So, um, give us kind of a, an overview of what you do now in your lifestyle. So now I'm really interested in, um, I participate in motocross, mountain biking, downhill mountain biking, and I do a ton of it. So in order to do that, I want to train in a way that enhances my performance for like everything to wheels. So because of that, I do it. I actually do more endurance work now. I was on the spin bike yesterday, mm -hmm. like prepping for the upcoming. I saw that on Instagram. <laughs> so yeah. I actually do some endurance work now. Um, endurance is a huge component for riding anything with two wheels. Yeah. So I do do endurance work and I still, I still squat heavy and deadlift heavy. And right now I'm kind of just flying by the seat of my pants a little bit, but I'm about to ramp up my conditioning more just because again, the seasons are coming up. And mm -hmm. then once the season is in full, full swing, I back my gym time way down. So mm -hmm. I still lift. I strength train several days a week, conditioning work kind of like metabolic circus. Just yeah, fun. they are fun. I think it's, it's something rewarding about that sweat too, like that instant gratification of like breaking a sweat. Because I always tell my clients, you know, when I was training for bodybuilding, and I don't know if, if this was you, but like, I hardly ever sweat unless I was doing cardio. But like when I'm in the gym, even now, like, you know, I still do bro workouts, like, you know, I'll do weightlifting, I'll weightlift or whatever. Um, but I hardly break a sweat. Like I'm not like dripping in sweat. And so I think, you know, I've noticed training clients in the gym myself that a lot of them tend to not want to stick with it because they're used to the cardio queen side of things where it's that instant gratification of like, oh, I get off the elliptical or the treadmill and I'm like covered in sweat. Whereas like weight training, you know, it's harder that you feel the burn, but it's not that like you're not drenched in sweat usually after your weight training. So it's definitely hard to wrap your head around if you come from like the cardio queen world <clears throat> for sure. Right. Yeah. So, um, is there, would you think now that you struggle with anything still like from like your post competition days or have you, do you feel like those like nagging voices creep up sometimes with like food or exercise ever? You know, honestly, it's so rare for me that that happens anymore. And I think a huge, huge component of getting past that stuff for me has been focusing so hard on performance, mm -hmm. you know, throwing myself into every outdoor sport imaginable, you know, focusing on all kinds, of, anything that's outside, mm -hmm. I've been in it. Yeah. And, and it's really interesting because when you get involved in like sports and stuff like that, it doesn't matter what your body looks like. Right. You know, I mean, you're all of a sudden you're fueling for performance mm -hmm. and for performance only. Mm -hmm. And so that's been a huge, huge blessing in my life and such a great shift for me. So that's really helped. Um, now I kind of, the only thing I'll notice is like, oh, I was, you know, I was thinking the other day, gosh, you know, mountain bike season is going to feel better if I was a little bit lighter. Yeah. But again, it's like for a, from a performance yeah. standpoint, I mean, there's once in a while, like the little gremlins will kind of creep up and mm -hmm. be like, you should be doing more cardio, but it's, <laughs> it really is rare for me nowadays. Thank goodness. Yeah. And I agree. I think same thing, you know, um, for me, it's like, which we're going to touch on too, because I know you pull, you pole dance or have pole danced before, but same thing for me, it's getting on the pole. I'm just like, Oh, I'm like, so I'm so hard to get my ass up and down this thing. Like at this point I need to drop some weight, not because I'm worried about like my abs. It's more of like, it's a struggle for me to do something that I love. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. 
Yeah. So tell us about your pole dancing adventures. <laughs> yeah. So about two, gosh, maybe two and a half years now, two and a half years ago now, um, I kind of like launched this motto in my life, which is embrace. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that was an attempt to get myself off the freaking couch and away from that dieting mindset and to really get involved in just life in general, have new experiences. I was just kind of a scaredy cat all the time. And I think a lot of it was um, just like a self-defeating mentality. Mm -hmm. I was scared of everything. I was worried about what my body looked like. So two and a half years ago, I was like, you know what? I'm over this. I need some fun in my life. And so getting into pull and aerial silks, mm -hmm. that was a huge part of it. I because I never would have gotten involved in something like that. I was just too self-conscious. Yeah. But that was kind of like my step into, uh, you know, like the unknown and like my, uh, like the uncomfort zone. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad I did it because I fell in love with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I pull, I really liked silks, but pull ended up really being, being my jam. I loved it. Yeah. And it's definitely, um, it's funny that you said you needed something to pull you off the couch because pull is the extreme. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, like in terms of like, um, you know, there's a part of you that has to be vulnerable because you're like with this apparatus that has so much stigma behind it. And like, do you tell people, do you not tell people what are they going to think? You know, so yeah, kudos to you for growing some balls <laughs> and like just being like, I'm just going to do it. You know, that's great. Totally. Uh, so I know you coach women now and, um, what would you give, like, what sort of tips or advice would you give to women, um, who are struggling with like getting on the scale and being attached to that number? Um, you know, what little like fat loss tips or hints or anything that you would say, like, if you could go back and like, look at, that would be great ways to start with just getting started in, in the whole fitness journey. So I think um, a big a big part, I was so glued to the scale for so long. I mean, mm -hmm. I would get up in the morning. The first thing I would do is use the bathroom, stand on the scale. And yeah. whatever number popped up would dictate my mood for the day. Mm -hmm. So I was either walking on sunshine or I was just pissed as you could even get at. And it was yeah. usually the latter. Um, so when I have clients that are like, hey, you know, like I'm weighing myself every day and sometimes several times a day. Mm -hmm. I try to ask them to like negotiate or compromise a little bit. So if they're weighing every day, can they start to just weigh every other day mm -hmm. or maybe every third day? So kind of try to whittle that back a little bit. Um, for people that are just getting involved, like in their health and fitness journey, I think do something, mm -hmm. do something, do anything, pick something, but go do it. I think there's so much information out there anymore. It just gets really overwhelming. And mm -hmm. it, most of my friends or family that have come to me, they're like, well, I don't really know where to start, but I just know I kind of have to be miserable in order to do it. Right. That, like they think they have to diet. Yeah. They have to glued to the treadmill and I'm like that you actually don't have to do either one of those things mm -hmm. like just go walk every day for 20 minutes you know take a walk so just do something start small and small is not glamorous or exciting at all so mm -hmm. a lot of times it can be hard to convince people to do that but just do something like pick something small and then start to just chip away at it you know because like that little small thing that you're doing creates that success momentum you know you crush that small thing it motivates you and inspires you to crush something just a little bit bigger. And it yeah. just kind of like self-perpetuates. Yeah. It's a domino effect for sure. <laughs> you know, and I think a lot of people, um, a lot of women's women are like, you know, Oh, I'm too tired. You know, I don't know how to get started. I'm too tired to get started. And it just goes back and forth. And it's like, you just need that. Like you just got to tip that one domino and then it, then it's a, you know, forward feeding cycle, but, um, it can be rough at first. And I know that a lot of my clients struggle with like not seeing progress fast enough. And what do you usually suggest for women that are like, Oh, it's not happening fast enough. You know, <laughs> they're like getting frustrated. That is tough. And, and it can be frustrating when you feel like you're doing everything right and you want to see the results that you want to see, you know, it is, it's so hard. And I, you know, we've both been there. We get mm -hmm. it. Um, for me, it's kind of like for my clients, it's helping them understand like, well, where are you making progress? What are the other markers of progress that we can look at? Because their progress is really like a broad spectrum, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of things fall under the category of progress. So, you know, like, are you sleeping better? Is your sex drive better? Mm -hmm. Is your digestion better? Do you feel more energetic? Like all these things should be weighted just as heavily as 
how our body is changing, you know? So if those things are changing, then it's just a matter of time before the body composition change changes as well. So it's just kind of focusing on the great things that are happening and then giving it some time and a lot of consistency mm -hmm. in order to see the body change. So I would assume that you do not use the scale anymore as a measure of progress. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I actually had to take a very extreme stance with it, um, which I, I understand is not right for everyone, but back in like November of, I want to say maybe 2014, maybe 2013, but I threw it away because I was so just mentally trapped by it. Yeah. So I tossed it and I have not stood on a scale since. I just can't do it. That's awesome. <laughs> I will, so with the nutrition and training, like if the gremlins still creep up, I think they would if I was still weighing myself. So I just, I don't even, I don't even deal with that. That's great. I think so many women could benefit from hearing that because it's, it becomes like this obsession. Like you just start to, again, like you said, dictate your day based on the number that comes back. And, you know, we actually here in the studio, we run transformation programs and we stopped weighing girls. And they, like, some of them were like, what the hell? <laughs> you know, like, what do you mean you took away the scale? And I'm like, we're not using that as a measure of progress anymore, ladies. Like, we'll do photos so that way you can look and see, like, you know, I've, because some girls are like, well, I have 50 pounds to lose. You know, I'm, I'm not like this girl over here who's just doing this to stay in shape or whatever. And it's like, I get that. So let's use photos. We'll do measurements, use your clothing. And again, other markers of progress. How are you feeling? How's your sex drive, your hormones, you know, everything, mood. Um, so yeah, that was a huge shift in the studio probably about a year ago where we were like, we're yanking the scale out because it was doing more harm than good when they'd come back in to reweigh and remeasure. Same thing. If the scale wasn't reflecting back, it'd be just, they'd want to give up and quit. And that's not the point. Right. And the, you know, the scale is so hard too, because I think so many of us use it as a form of control. Mm -hmm. We try to like, Oh, well, you know, what's going to happen. I've had countless clients tell me, well, if I don't weigh myself, like things are just going to spiral out of control. And maybe that is the case for some people, but I feel like for the majority of people, that's not at all the case. I think what ends up happening is, is you realize you don't have to weigh yourself mm -hmm. and you're still okay. Yeah. You know, it's like this giant like leap of faith, like a quantum leap of faith saying, I trust myself mm -hmm. to know what's best for my body and I don't need this freaking digital device to, you know, trap me in the mm -hmm. number every day. Yeah. So it's tough. It's about, I think it's about trust versus control. Yeah, exactly. Did you ever, did you ever track macros at any point? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that, that's, that just makes me think of that because I did that post show and I did it even during, um, the beginning of like my powerlifting phase and it became like this new obsession, like this new number that I need to focus on the targets I need to make and da, 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 da. And it was like, okay, I'm scratching like the, like six meals a day, tilapia and asparagus, like chicken and broccoli, you know? And so I need this other way to figure out if I'm doing it right. And so I started doing that. And one day I was like, I can't do this anymore. Like, this is mentally exhausting. I'm having to figure out if like, we can go to this restaurant based on like, if they have their menu on my fitness pal, like just the stupidest shit, you know? So, um, what, and then the funny thing is, is like, I'm actually, it's once I stopped, it's like, I had to trust myself to make like decisions. Like we know how to eat. I know that I should not be knuckle deep in a bag of Oreos. Like, hello, <laughs> you know, it's common sense. That's just not my personality. So it's just, it's so rewarding. It's so freeing to not have to do that anymore and know that like my pants, everything fits the same. You know, it, it hasn't been like, it hasn't gone to hell in a handbasket because I stopped counting my macros, you know. But I think, you know, I think things like that are um, a, an okay tool in the beginning for some people who have absolutely no idea. You know, when they're like, I have no idea how many calories I eat and I'm a hundred pounds overweight or 75 or 50 or whatever to, to get some perspective. I think that things like that can serve as a benefit, like my, my fitness pal to just shed light on where they can sort of pull the curtain back and, and hone in on their nutrition. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. So I know all, um, all, you know, diets are individual to the person. What do you find works the best for you at this moment? And maybe what you subscribe to like your clients in order to find their 
way in the nutrition world because there's so many different schools of thought. Um, I don't like to put labels on anybody or myself and like, well, I'm paleo or I'm, you know, do you adhere to any certain diet or do you just kind of let us, let us know how Jen does it? Yeah. You know, I, I feel like after focusing in figure and physique for so long and then powerlifting and then also icing all that off with, uh, focusing on feeling for performance mm -hmm. that has kind of given me the experience, um, to understand how my body functions best. And that is like a serving of protein at every meal and vegetables at as many meals as possible. I actually love vegetables. So I do too. Easy. Um, but those are kind of like my non-negotiables. So protein, vegetables, and then usually like a serving of carbohydrate, a little bit of dietary fat, and then I call it good. I just don't overthink it anymore. Mm -hmm. I do try to taper a little bit up or down if I know I have like a big writing day coming up, you know, like this Saturday, I will definitely boost my carbs Friday, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, if I am like, hey, I'm sitting at my, in my office four days this week doing nothing, then I'll taper it down a little bit. So it's, I feel like it's very much just, um, it's just automated right now. It's just easy. Yeah. I really love whole unprocessed foods as much as possible. So mm -hmm. what's your weakness? <laughs> Do you, are you like a sweet wine, salty, a little bit of everything? It's, it's, the wine it's rosé and mm. peanut butter malt balls from whole foods oh. those are the two things that i just can't i can't stop with <laughs> <laughs> hey that's okay in moderation you know moderation and moderation sometimes it's not moderate and then it's like yep. fine right it's just good to not be able to like beat yourself up about that anymore because i don't know if you were like this but i was like if i had you know because everything for me was like weighed out and portioned and if i you know, it got to the point where I was like abusing peanut butter. Like I couldn't have peanut butter or almond butter in my house because my family would go to sleep and I'd be in the fridge with a spoon eating peanut butter. And like my family would be like, it's healthy. It's okay. And I'm like, no, it's not okay to eat half a jar of peanut butter. <laughs> you know, it's not okay. <laughs> That was my life. I totally understand. <laughs> yeah, totally. So on the on my blog, Living the Goddess Life, I have a um, like trifecta of fit, sexy, and confident. So I like to, when I interview guests, just give me a little snippet on like, you know, what you do that makes you feel fit, sexy, and confident. So have at it. Like the all three of them? Yeah. Things. Does make me, you know, I would say things like um, yoga, any type of like sensual movement for mm -hmm. me absolutely does it. So it's yoga, it's silks, it's pole sport, those types of things where I feel like I'm just really in my body and present at the moment. Those are the types of things that really, really do it for me. Always have. Love it. Awesome. And I think it's just great that you do poll because it's like, you get it. <laughs> you totally get it. It'd be so much fun to get you in the studio here and have you try it out. And yeah, definitely, would definitely would. So, um, what do you, do you have any like rituals, daily rituals that you would say, um, you know, cause I, I find it just like, you know, bad habits, having good habits will obviously outweigh the bad habits that you have in your life. So are there certain rituals that you have in place that you would say keep you on track to living like a fit lifestyle or a healthy lifestyle? Yeah, I have a really concrete morning ritual. And it's funny because it doesn't matter where I go or who I'm traveling with. Like it's the same thing every time. Um, but I always, my morning ritual always is pulling like a daily tarot card, journaling, reading a little bit, drinking coffee. That's what I do every single morning. It doesn't matter where I'm at. I, I feel very much like off if I don't. Mm. Like that's kind of the way like I get centered for the day. Mm -hmm. So that's very much a ritual. And then I walk every day um, anywhere between about 45 to 60 minutes. Nice. Just kind of walk, take a good walk. And those those things keep me sane, I swear. <laughs> hey, it'll do. It definitely has that grounding and centering um, aspect to it for sure. First thing in the morning. And I, like I said, Nagar and I were just talking and she's the queen of the morning ritual. And so I love it. And I think, um, I think it's something that we neglect a lot of times, just getting up in reactive mode. First thing we do is grab our cell phones and start reacting to the world around us. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's funny. I was just in Cabo with Nagar and the entire GGS advisory board just like a month ago. Mm -hmm. And we 
like I saw everyone's rituals. It was so funny. Like we all woke up in the morning, got our coffee, had our books and our journals, walked right out to the pool on a lounge chair and no one spoke to each other because like we all just knew. Yeah. So yeah, it was, it's really, it's, it was really interesting to see. Yeah, exactly. It's like, don't talk to me till I've made yeah. my, created my little like safe space. It. Yeah. It's <laughs> awesome. Well, this was loads of fun. Um, thank you so much for being on. I would love to, I know you have a freebie that I would love to share with my girls and I will link it up. Will you give us a little peek as to what is in your freebie? Like give us some, some insight. Yeah, I was posting these little circuits, like kind of metabolic circuit type of things on my Instagram and people just loved them. So I put together five of my very most favorite, uh, workouts they're under 20 minutes uh strength based also a good dose of conditioning so they're really fun and they're really challenging okay and then how about how long do they usually like are the workouts a certain duration do you think or less than 20 minutes less each than... of them is less than 20 minutes probably between 15 to 20 okay and then is this a gym like would you need access to a gym for something like this do you think yeah, most of them kind of need some basic strength equipment that you could find at any kind of gym. Okay, perfect. And what is it called? And I'll link it up so that way everyone can get a hold of it. Um, I think, gosh, that's a good question. I think it's jencomas.com backslash five favorite workouts. Five favorite workouts. workouts. Okay, yeah. perfect. And last but not least, where can everyone find you? I know I've been following you on Instagram for probably a couple years now, um, but give us your Facebook, Instagram, and wherever else you're at, Twitter, Snapchat, or anything like that. Yeah, Instagram, I'm at Jen Comas. Facebook is facebook.com backslash Jen Comas. Um, or, of course, my website, which is jencomas.com. Where do you hang out most, Instagram? Yeah, probably Instagram. Yeah, me too. It's fun. It's yeah, just like, like you know, it. it's, I think it's a whole visual aspect, a lot less reading <laughs> and, you know, you just right. skim through. That's interesting. Okay. I'll read. Yeah. I love it. Well, thank yeah. you so much. That was loads of fun. And I look forward to sharing all of your goodies with my, with my crew. So thank you so much, Jen. Yeah. Thanks for having me. All right. Take it easy.